Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. As promised, this is a follow-up game of round 13 from the Top Chess Engine Championship of season 25. It's a playoff game between Komodo and Stockfish using the same exact opening as we've seen in our previous game. I don't want to lose any time, so let's shoot. With all the details coming up, Komodo this side started up the game from this very position using a six move book. As we explained in our previous game, we saw an e4 opening, c5 followed, knight f3, b6, d4, c takes, knight takes, and after bishop b7 and knight c3, kingside knight came into the game to challenge e4, e5 became, well e4 became e5. The last move we uh, saw was knight d5. Komodo took, Stockfish captures, and with h4 and e6, we saw knight b5, a6. The queen is attacked, and right after queen c8, we saw this check. Both the knight and bishop came off, and up to this point, this is exactly the same picture as we saw earlier, when these two engines played in reverse colours. If you check out this link that follows, you may note the engines did not get here using the same exact sequence of moves, but it doesn't really matter. Stockfish here opted for this push, Komodo lifts the rock into the third, and now with knight c6 and rook g3, here's a point where we get to see a different type of game. Stockfish directed the queen to go after this guy in d6. Komodo blocks the take in this way. And now Stockfish tries to deal with this position to just push on with this guy. In short, this guy is saved because of the discovered rook attack. h5 from Komodo resulted to this queen repositioning. I have to say, understand this move. We a total lie. There should be three attacking the big lady. Let's see her to return to base. Komodo here lifts the queen into the second. And the idea is, if you castle, attack the queen, come in with this type of offer. And if you reject it in this way, F6 to attack the bishop will get you done before you even realize it. The question is how? Can you see it? If you take here, should the bishop come off, queen takes result to a mating. How many moves? Just a few. King h8 is for sure going to accelerate the mate. In with this check, and after king g8, take and you don't even need to queen a rook will do exactly the same thing once the rook is removed then there's a mate and let's confirm it doesn't matter if you're stockfish particularly you get to see these moves up here coming back after queen d2 this is how stockfish plays it and again it is very hard to understand what is going on. If you expect bishop h6, this too certainly looks to be a smashing initiative. But Komodo goes it one better, I think. This is how the engine reacted. And for sure, with the exception of three or four moves, every single move we saw here in this game today has been repeated in the previous game of round 13. But not in the same move order. Bishop e2 came way earlier here. Bishop e4 was never played in round 13. Instead of g6, we had an h6 when the bishop was attacked, and so forth. Stockfish came up with this way forward. Komodo launches this guy 
And one move you will not expect Starfish to go for was what you're about to witness next. Any takers? Actually, there is no point. This move that comes up next is just insane crazy. Has anyone tried this night move? It's the wrong move. This is how Stockfish plays it. I kid you not, Komodo... Must have got excited here. The dragon shot along with this guy. Rook G8 followed. And again, we got to see another wicked move, which makes zero sense. This is what Komodo does. You know, King F1 was also played by Stockfish. But why go for it now? And what was the point? One thing for sure, neither engine castle in this game. There are things happening here, which I will not tell you, or at least not at this very moment. For sure later, and I will mark this, so I'm not going to forget it. Stockfish opted for yet another insane and mad move. From all the moves it had, it went on to remove this guy. The dragon obviously took with a check, and with the bishop now returning to block this check, Komodo is not interested in swapping. So, this is what the engine does. Rook a c8 lets the bishop to wedge between the two pawns. Stockfish repositions the bishop to expose the rooks. And with Komodo delivering yet another check, again, it would be pointless to ask you to try and fish out how Stockfish reacts. If you could say Stockfish could ever get drunk, this next move had to be a proof. The engine picks up the rook and covers for the check. Can you explain this cause? I cannot even help you here. At best, you can use the pin to lift the queen here. But after queen g8, and again at best, if you take the rook, if you capture with this guy, does this look like a great position to have? Believe it or not, when the rook pinned himself, we did not even get to see queen h6. This is how Komodo tries to do his magic. And even this move is slightly understandable. This rook could not go anywhere. And as soon as the king moves out of or moves away to g7 or g8, only then Komodo is most likely to remove the rook. So with Komodo opting for this queen move, Stockfish advances this guy to e5. b5 came off. And with Stockfish capturing, this guy also came off. So that might explain queen e2. And here it comes. Stockfish repositions the king. And again, rather than arrest the rook, this is how Komodo moves on. Only now just got this. <laughs> and why the rook was not necessarily captured is because he's half trapped. If rook g4, I beg your pardon, if rook g5, after queen e2 and bishop g6, how strong is bishop g4? If bishop f5, take and take, and with the rook now partially saved, what's the big deal? The big deal is here, via this bishop repositioning. Queen e8 is most likely going to lead to the knight to get attacked. And there is a little trick you can apply. I'm not quite sure whether it works though. It's his queen move. If you take and take, should the knight be arrested, once you deliver this check, Komodo is busted and needs to resign. Correct? Absolutely not. King e2, rook takes and takes on d7, and Komodo looks more than fine. Rook d8 is most likely going to lead to this attack, and even if this guy drops, this is what you need. Take and take. How? With the bishop, of course. And this guy on d6 will walk, and there is nothing you can do to stop him. 
So now that we examine at least this line of play, even this so-called trick does not work. Coming back, this was the last move we saw. Stockfish opted for this queen swing. Komono backs off his own queen to the second, and now via this response. Stockfish has just asked for it. With the mate in two looming in the background, Komodo finally picks up the rook. Stockfish captures in this way, and of course, we can certainly see what's coming. Without needing to explain, Komodo walked with his majesty east, and now via this push, Komodo chases after the queen. Queen a2, but to the knight to come under fire. And I have to tell you, Komodo is all over stockfish. Knight d8, but to this funny type of gesture, if you like. And with both rooks departing, stockfish picks up this guy with the queen. And as a result, both queens go home, and this is how Komodo plays it. This guy on b5 looks very promising, and this rook on a1 is going to do what it takes to get him actually home. Bishop d3 chasing after this guy. And to the immediate attack on the knight. The knight flees to safety. But by this, what's the word? Renewed attack. Stockfish covers him in this way. f3 and bishop d5. That to bishop b4. I mean, Stockfish marching with his king. Commodore does the same. King of seven and a very, very, and I'm going to use a funny word again, funny rook a8. And I say funny because of the continuation. The knight arrested this guy at the same time exposes a rook. Rook b8, the only move, led to knight b7. Komodo uses the bishop to check the king, and with king e6, the checks continued. King f5 resulted to this attack. This bishop slots himself in place, but something was about to backfire. After this check and king g6, king f3 and f5 resulted to this rule response. When these two guys dropped. This is how Stockfish reacts. A brand new check appeared. The king is in a way forced east and now via this very careful king march. Not bishop takes g4 but this move instead. b6 saving the pawn that's a brand new attack on this very pawn. Commander grabs hold of this guy and in turn, rather than get rid of g4, this is how Stockfish plays it. Stockfish is clearly not Stockfish today, and he's kind of puzzling. Komodo applied this check, the rook is attacked, and with Komodo now chasing after the knight, we saw another massive Stockfish blunder, and let's hear it. This is what it did. And what is so funny again about this check is how Komodo reacts. Though you can easily take, this is what Komodo does. Stockfish applied this check, this guy came off, and with the bishop returning to cover the knight, Komodo could go rook c8, and yet he skips his move to something. Someone expected, yet brilliant. <laughs> Ouch, I just hurt myself. This engine did the unthinkable and got rid of the knights for the rook. So let's see where this exchange takes us. As soon as the rook dropped, this guy also came off. And you know what you call this? Simplification. And you know what, guys? This is actually it. This was the very last move we saw in this game with Komodo beating an otherwise very poor stockfish. That, let's say underperformed enormously. This game of round 16, which is a follow-up from game of the game of round 13, was wicked in so many different ways. 
At this point in the game, there was no mate detected, but the evils from each engine showed a clear, crystal clear win for Komodo. And the game was terminated or adjudicated in Komodo's favour. What is safe to say as a result is that the playoffs have just ended actually. And the two top engines are Lila and Stockfish that managed to end with 14 and a half points each. So do expect an immense battle between them in a 100 game match that would lead to this season's winner. And before I leave you for today, I want to come back to mention something I didn't say before. It goes like this. What do you think Komodo won today? It's something we mentioned previously, not necessarily today. If you look at the playoffs, I'm talking at all of them, all of the games that were played, no engine with the black pieces managed to score a single win. Why? It's because the very opening, if you like, or I mean, let me rephrase that, it's because the organisers of the event always give the edge to the engine taking this side. And this is the main reason, maybe, why the opposition finds it impossible or near impossible to win. So let's look from this point ahead. 100 games are waiting to be played and do expect to see some very strong encounters. For sure, I will be back for more, expecting to probably cover some very interesting games. Your chess puzzler here, and you know the drill, safety always first. Yeah.